Hello to my Facebook fam. This is Kim Coles, and I am live here on Facebook and on the Instagramage as well. And if you can see by the title here that it's, I'm asking you what's in your bank, what's in your wallet. You know that commercial with Samuel L. Jackson, and I think there's somebody else who's doing the commercial now too. What's in your wallet? Which is kind of no, no, nosy. Or maybe I should ask you what's in your bank. That's really nosy. What I really want to know is what's in your story bank. Let me tell you why I'm asking you this, because if you are a business owner, a coach, a speaker, or a small business owner, entrepreneur, you really should have a bunch of stories that you use to share with others that are the way that you captivate your crowd, the way you compel your customers to know more about you and to buy from you as well. So I have several story prompts that I love to give my clients in case you didn't know. Yes, I'm an actress. Yes, I'm a comedian. Yes, I'm a speaker. But I'm also a teacher and I love teaching people about the power of their story and how to use their own powerful stories, their own lived experiences to connect with their products, their services, their why, and connect with your audience. It's the perfect way to connect to your audience. And I'm going to give you two of my very favorite stories that can go into your story bank right now. I should say my story prompts. I'm going to give these to you. So these are my two favorites. You ready? Hey, Allison, I see you. Hey, Pella. Hey, Mary, how are you? I just saw Kita pass by. Hello, my dear. Hello. Hey, Tammy Porter, how are you? Okay, so here we go. So the reason why you do this is because storytelling is very powerful. It's a powerful way to connect, as I said. And there's many types of stories, and we won't talk about that today. We will talk about, uh, well, I'll give you an overview. There's stories about you, there's stories about your clients, and stories about your products. This is how you connect better to your crowd, your audience, your potential customers and clients. Stories are the perfect way to connect because it's how we as human beings connect. We hear stories and we see ourselves in the stories or we see that that story is nothing like what our life would be and therefore we are still um, drawn in. And stories are a perfect way to really attract the type of people that you want in your business if you're a coach, if you're a speaker, if you're an entrepreneur, you're a entrepreneur, it's the perfect way to bring people in and to give them a taste of who you are and why you do what you do. And then that makes people want to do business with you. It's really magical because it's part of our DNA. So what I love to do with my clients is I give them story prompts. And I want to give you two right now. So my first favorite story prompt, prompt is, who is your favorite mentor? Who was your favorite mentor or your most inspiring mentor or your most influential mentor? The reason why that question is important is that there are clues inside the story of why that person is your most uh, influential or best mentor. Okay, somebody's wearing too much lip gloss, so enjoy the blot. I've blotted. So I'm going to tell two of my favorite mentors. Those of you who have known me may have heard me tell one or both of these stories before. And this is why they're important because here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you the story of why they are my favorite mentor and what they meant to me. So one of them is my sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Barrington. And those of you who know me have heard me tell the story about how she was just this awesome teacher. She taught us not only the lessons in the class, but taught us lessons about life as well. And one of her favorite things to do would be to send the boys off on something. I don't know, maybe they would go play out in the yard or something or play out in the school, in the, you know, the playground. And she would pour into the girls all kinds of womanly things, you know, things we needed to know as young ladies, you know, about etiquette and about taking care of our bodies and <laughs> taking care of, you know, being a lady. And one of the favorite things that she taught us was only a loose woman does not wear panties. Oh, did I tell you she was from the Caribbean? Yeah, she's from the Caribbean. Actually, she was from Guyana, Guyana. So South America, forgive me. She's from South America. So she had this little accent and she said, always wear panties. Only a loose woman does not wear panties. And I was like, loose, where's it going? It's not going anywhere. But I bet, it, I bet you I remember that lesson my whole life. I sure did. I sure did. I can't tell you that in the summertime, I might not wear a pair of drawers because it's hot outside. But it's a lesson I really remember. Now, that's the silly part of the story. But 
there's another story of once we all moved on to the seventh grade, we thought we were grown and we thought we were like all grown up and we thought we had it going on. And one day she caught a bunch of us in the hallway and we had really been misbehaving. And I mean, meanwhile, it's a private school. It's a Lutheran school. So there's only so much misbehaving you can do. Um, one of us had begun wearing her skirt really short. Like, you know, you take your uniform skirt, you roll it up. So it comes, becomes a mini skirt. Another one of us was cutting class a lot. And like, you know, in the hallway, just doing nothing, getting into mischief. And another one just started just lying and saying that her homework wasn't ready, just lying to the teacher. So she ran into us in the hallway and I'm going to change the names to protect the innocent. And she was like, Beverly Barton, you're a fraud. And so and so, you look like a whore. And Kimberly Coles, you are my biggest disappointment. And I remember thinking like, wait a minute. She's a liar. She's a whore, but I'm your biggest disappointment. Well, I later had a conversation with her and she said, it's because you're my biggest disappointment because you have so much potential. Why are you hanging out with these girls in the hallway? Why are you not in the class getting your homework, getting your work done, I should say. And she said, I have great expectations for you and your abilities and your talent. And this is, what am I, 12, 11, 12? You know, she saw something in me I didn't see in myself. And so she's one of my favorite mentors because she saw something in me I didn't even see in myself and she let me know it. And from that moment, I got my game together. I, I, I pulled it together. I started behaving and doing the things I'm supposed to do. So this is why this is one of my favorite questions. Who was your favorite mentor? And if you'd like to say who your favorite mentors are or your, one of your favorite mentors was, share it with me right now. I have to look up a little bit in order to see my comments on the Instagram. Does anybody have a favorite mentor that affected them in a particular way? I have another one, my Girl Scout leader. Our assistant troop leader was a woman named Maria Linda Rosa Rodriguez de Segrida de San Juan. And my mother was so smart because she sent me, like I went to a very like a private, very sort of conservative, Lutheran, private school, but she sent me to Girl Scouts in the hood. So I had a mix of being super earthy and super sophisticated, like super like conservative and corny and in a box. And then I would go on the weekends to Girl Scouts where it was in the hood and it was earthy and it was real and down to earth. And because of that, I got this beautiful balance. And so Maria is another one of my... Um, favorite mentors, and I'll come back and tell you that story. It may or may not involve cursing. <laughs> and some lessons that, some lessons that Girl Scouts of America would not be, would not sanction us learning. But Maria taught us stuff. There's stuff I know now, and I'm glad that I knew this because I now had an education on how to really take care of my body and how to make choices. So who here, hey, I see you, Dr. Lorraine, hello. Who here, your favorite mentor was Pastor Edward Mar Ramirez. Wonderful. Anybody else want to share their mentor with me? I'm looking up if I could see. I um, may have to scroll up on the Instagram. Anybody else want to share their mentor with me? Of course, I'm going to come back. My art teacher, Mrs. Mouton, encouraged me to paint and be yourself in the 11th or 12th grade. That is so, you try to talk to her as much as you can. Yeah, I need to reach out to my Mrs. Barrington. She's well in her 80s now. So, yes. So, it's Tashina. Yes, that is who... Uh, my Mad TV character was based on. So she's uh, so it's Tashina's asking me uh, about uh, if you want to go on YouTube and go to um, YouTube and type in Kim Cole's Mad TV. There's a, a sex sex education teacher named Maria Linda Rosa Rodriguez de Sangria de San Juan, and that's who they based. On. I told her, I, I did that character in my one woman show and they took it and really expanded it and made her really like ridiculous. She was not that ridiculous, but she, she gave us some sex education lessons. Yes. And that's what that character is based on. So thank you so much. You remember her? You remember? Yeah. She's, she taught us some things. I'll come back and tell you that story. Well, she gave us an analogy and I won't say the words that kissing leads to blank, just like passing gas leads to blank. Like one leads to one, just like one leads to one. It was an analogy that made me go, oh, so if I start kissing and let boys rub up on me, the next move is going to be S-E-X. And I'm not ready for that. She's like, you want to have babies? You want to get pregnant? Go ahead. But just know that kissing leads to this, just like that leads to that. And I was like, oh, I understand that. And I didn't tell my mother that's what I was learning in Girl Scouts. But I remember it. <laughs> so, yes. 
who are your favorite mentors? So that is one of my favorite story prompts because as you can see here, I see somebody said you loved music, played the violin and the clarinet, singing and dancing. Yeah, there are people in your life who came into your life to expose you to things that now make up who you are. And those are fantastic stories to use, not only to share with your kids and share with the people in your world and in your life, but you can infuse those stories into your, into your work, into your stories, into your business. Uh, I am who I am today because I had those very separate um, experiences, you know, this very conservative, pulled up Lutheran school, juxtaposed against the Puerto Rican Girl Scouts in the hood. It makes me who I am. I am grounded and aware of, you know, of all the things. I have like a great, you know, it's almost like I love to tell people that the analogy I use is I love champagne, but I'll drink it out of a red cup. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's a balance of who I am. It make me who I, made me who I am. And so these kinds of stories not only tell, inform who you are, but inform your customers who, I, who you are. So somebody who's looking for someone to be their story coach, perhaps me, wink, will choose me because I have let them know that I am balanced. I've let them know that I see things from different sides. I know the story of only a loose woman does not wear panties. And sometimes in the summertime, I may or may not wear panties, but don't judge me. <laughs> it has nothing to do with business, but it has everything to do with who I am. And so these story prompts help you with that. So it was, I hope that one was helpful. Think about the mentors. Think about the teachers. Think about people who inspired you and why. So Samantha, hey, Samantha. Hello, darling. Come no baby. What? My boyfriend, Guy, now deceased, I'm sorry to hear that, encouraged me to pursue your passion of doing hair. And you do great hair. So I am so grateful to this man, Guy, who came into your life to inspire you this way. It's who you are today. And if you tell that story, I don't know if you still have your salon. I don't know if you're still based in D.C. We so need to catch up. But if you tell us you tell me that you were inspired by this amazing man who was in your life who saw this value in you and saw this talent in you and fostered it in you and that this is what you do today. Well, here's what the story does. It says to me that you listen and that you're open and that you were open to someone seeing the greatness in you. It also says something too, and I'm going to just add this, this is off the top of my head, that in this society where we hear so many stories of men who don't honor women. We hear and see so many stories of men who would squash talent in women because he would find it, maybe he found you um, somehow threatening. That no, here was someone who fostered this talent in you. So now as a woman, I hear that story, maybe as a woman who's been, in, who's been hurt by men or who's been the thumb has been put down by men or maybe something, you know, I have a negative feeling or negative story about men. I hear that story and I hear nothing but hope that here is a man who saw it in you and said, girl, you need to be doing this. So that story now draws me to you and goes, pulls me in to go, wow, that's powerful. It's powerful to hear. I'm happy to see you, mama. I'm happy to see you. We so need to reconnect. This is what I help people do. Hey, Sean Carter Peterson, how are you? Hey, Zenia Morris. This is what I'm going to be teaching at the Virtual Girls Rock event. When is it? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at my calendar. When is it? When is it? When is it? September 20th and 21st in Los Angeles. <laughs> Virtual Girls Rock. This is what I'm going to be teaching. I hope you all are enjoying this. Okay, that was my first prompt. I promised you two. I want to know if it's me at the page. You like what da, 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 feel closer to my goals. That, I'm going to come back and read that. That went by so fast. Hey, princess. Woo, woo, woo. So my second favorite prompt that I like to give my clients, again, if you're just coming in late, let me explain what I'm doing here. I'm asking you what's in your wallet or better yet, what's in your bank or better yet, what's in your story bank. You as an entrepreneur, business owner, coach, speaker, teacher, what, what's never it is you do, what's never, speaker, my speakers, you need to build a bank of stories so that when you're going to go speak, when you're going to go teach, when you're going to go make an, an, um, 
make an example. When you're going to go market, you pull a story out of your bank and go, this story will help connect to the people I'm getting ready to connect to. They will see and hear my passion. They will see and hear where I come from. They will see and hear what I'm all about and be more connected to me and more compelled to read my book, buy my services, book me again, buy my hair, do all the things. That's what this is for. This is a way to connect and compel. Okay, so my other favorite question is, what did you like to do as a kid? What did you like to do as a kid? Write that, you like that Afro Betty? Build a bank of stories. It's a story bank. So I pull my stories out and go, what audience am I gonna be speaking to? Huh, here's a story that I'm gonna share with the audience and they will feel who I am, they will learn from me, they will be inspired by me, they will be educated by me, whatever it is I decide my end, uh, my, my intention will be. Uh, and therefore they will resonate, see themselves in me, and maybe even decide to purchase something from you or ask me to teach them how to do it too, right? So I'm glad you're enjoying this. It's your story bank. What did you like to do as a kid? And for extra credit, ooh, this one's good. For extra credit, what did you used to get in trouble for as a kid? <gasps> ooh. What did you used to get in trouble for as a kid? Says volumes. Wanna know what one of mine is? You wanna know what mine is? I'm not gonna tell you. I'm gonna ask you yours first. What did you used to get in trouble for as a kid or what did you used to love to do as a kid? You like this? It is good advice, right? Esteris Arroyo. I'm glad you love story banks. Somebody said, uh, uh, da, da, da. <laughs> I am not a vampire. <laughs> I absolutely have aged. I'm wearing makeup. My hair is up. So it's giving me an uplift and I'm wearing, like I said, makeup. So mm -hmm. this is 57 and three quarters, but thank you. Yours was talking in class. Me too. Me too. What did you, oh, thank you, Con uh, Candace Nelson. Thank you. You talked back. You had a very smart mouth. Nice. Sneaking things you wanted but couldn't have. Have it. Never got away with it. You're not a good thief. You're not a good thief at all. What are some of the other things that you got uh, uh, in trouble for as a kid? That's actually like my little bonus question. You always wrote poems growing up. You were talking. Mary, were you talking? I was talking to. I would get in so much trouble for talking in class. And can I tell you something? My kindergarten teacher, I mean, this is how far back it goes. I used to talk back and I used to talk a lot in class. Now, here's what would happen. I would finish the work they gave me and I would be done. So I would be bored. So me and my friend Damaris, her name was Damaris Warren, we would talk. You know why? Because we were smart girls. We were smart. We would get the work done like that was easy. And then we would just talk. I never forget. My mother always told me that my my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Berry, used to say, I, I like when she talks. Let's let her, in fact, well, what happened was years, like in like third grade, I was in danger of being left back. All right, let's, 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 let me focus. Kindergarten, talk a lot, finish the work, talk a lot. First grade, finish the work, talk a lot. Second grade, finish the work, talk a lot. Third grade, finish the work, talk a lot. I became known as like one of the kids that would be talking like, shh, shh, shh. Kimberly, shh, Damaris, shh. My cousin Delia was also in the class. Delia, shh, we were smart girls. It's not our fault that we finished the work early and we were bored and we would talk. So I get to the fourth grade and Miss Ogle wasn't having me. Mrs. Ogle, Miss Ogle, excuse me. Miss Ogle was not having me. And she threatened to leave me back. Now, not because I wasn't smart. I tested in the fourth grade. I tested in the eighth grade for math and in the eighth or ninth grade for English. So I was smart. I was just bored, I would talk. So she was going to leave me back because I was considered to be like a behavioral problem. Like what, uh, Kimberly talks too much. She didn't know how to bring out my gifts and talents. So she was going to leave me back as a disciplinary measure. Like until she learns how to not talk. She's, so can you imagine leaving back a smart kid? That's not what happens to smart kids. I don't believe in leaving back kids who aren't so smart either. What you do is you give them 
the tools they need to bring them up. But don't get me started. I'm going to get, get on my, there is no leaving. There are no dumb kids. You give them what they need. You find out what their gifts and talents are. You teach them into the listening that they can have. Don't, don't get me started. You talk into the listening that they have, but don't get me started. She was going to leave me back. My parents went up to the school. They marched up to the school. What do you mean you're going to leave Kimberly back? And it was my kindergarten teacher, Miss Berry, who stood up for me and said, let her talk. You don't know that this might be the way she makes her money one day. <gasps> what? <sighs> the crowd goes wild. <sighs> she knew. My kindergarten teacher said, I never stopped her from talking. You know what I did? I gave her more work. You know what I did? I would make her my monitor. You, Miss Ogle, don't know what to do with a girl like that. Give her some papers to give out. Send her to the office to, this is back in the day when we used to, we, there was no copy machine. It was the mimeograph machine. Y'all remember, the, who's old enough to remember the mimeograph machine and make the papers smell, it, they had a little smell and you'd get high sniffing the papers. Okay, I'm showing my age. Give her something else to do. Make her your monitor. Have her help you grade the papers. Give her something to do. Don't tell her not to talk. It may be the thing that she does for her living one day. What? I bet everyone here, and I'm going to go back through these comments, who got in trouble for something that they used to do for a as a kid. If your parents or your teachers or your elders didn't beat it out of you, I bet you it's a part of who you are today. I bet you you use it today. Whoever here who said they be talking, y'all be talking a lot. I bet you talk to, to this day because it's your gift. It's your gift. Yeah, Crystal. Yeah, they do. They're smart, but their behavior, I, I, beha I misbehave because I was bored. Like, give me some more work to do. I bet any one of you here, that's why I said it was a, 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 um, a bonus question. Any one of you, uh, your mom put you in acting, singing, dance class at the Freedom Theater. Uh, my girl, Erica Alexander, Freedom Theater in Philadelphia, that's where Erica went to. That's where Erica went to. It went, comma, to, T-O-O. So I just wanted to share these prompts with you. These stories will, first of all, get you really thinking about great memories in your life. But again, that's a story now that I can use in my business. I can say that I am who I am today because it's who I always was. So it's also sort of a personal development D kind of thing. Like I, I don't have to question who I am because I've always been this way. And I finally, finally found a way, I finally found an outlet for it that was positive. Now for some people I may talk too much. I'm fully aware of that. There are some people who will watch this live and go, nope, Kim Coles is not for me. Talks too much and that's okay too. I'm being my authentic self and you can be the, your authentic self too. I promise you what you were like as a kid and what you used to get in trouble for are one of the, could be, I should say, one of the tools, one of the secret sauce insider things uh, that you are either already doing or that you stopped doing because somebody told you that you couldn't or shouldn't anymore, right? So all the books you see behind me and someone who asked me earlier, how many of those books have you read? The truth is as a kid, I used to love to read and then I discovered television. I started watching lots and lots and lots of television. So, uh, and that's, I grew up watching all the great comedians on TV. So I'm a girl who cannot jump double Dutch. I can't jump double Dutch from a life. Every girl from a city, every black girl, a little black girl from a city knows how to jump double Dutch. And some of my white sisters can do it too. And some of my Latino sisters can do it too. I can't jump double Dutch for nothing because I was inside reading my books and watching TV. By the way, here's another bonus for you. So you may not have a particular skill at something. You may not be good at something. I was a horrible double Dutch girl. Double Dutch girl. I can't jump. I'm not saying I don't have rhythm, but I just my feet would get caught in the thing because I was clumsy because I wasn't outside exercising. I was inside reading books and watching television. So in order to fit in, I learned to turn ropes really well. So I couldn't jump for nothing. You don't want me jumping in your double dutch. But I became a go-to girl for being a really good turner. So I made myself useful by learning how to turn. 
So I'd be sitting in the playground like they're not going to ask me to jump. I know they're not going to ask me to jump. But when they need an extra turner, I'm your girl. And I was like, good with it. And I could count with it. I made myself useful. I took my gifts and talents and made them use, useful in a way that, that, that made sense. Can't jump. I could turn like nobody's business. What? 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 I needed to be useful on the playground because I was real corny. Couldn't jump. Could turn for days. <laughs> could I could twirl the ropes? I could twirl the ropes. I could do all. I could turn. I could you know up here, down here, do tricks with the ropes. Couldn't jump for nothing because I was inside reading or watching television. <laughs> clues, clues, story prompts for you. So use these story prompts in your life. Use these story prompts in your stories. Just write down the way I how this is how I was as a kid. I remember when I dot dot dot. Or the first question I asked, my favorite mentor was so-and-so, and this is the reason why. And in there will be all these juicy tidbits and nuggets to who you are, and you can apply it to what you do today. Or reapply it. You go, wait a minute, I used to like to do so-and-so. Whatever happened to that kid? And get back to it. And the bonus bonus is if if whatever business you're doing, whatever type of um, service you provide, like I said, speaking, coaching, small business, uh, you're a writer, you're an author, all the things, even in the corporate world, use those things that, that are a part of who you are to share who you are with others and you'll never know how it will um, help to captivate, compel, and um, pull people in. Oh, Jennifer, I'm glad you enjoyed this. Jennifer said, why, why are you giving me the mad sign? Somebody gave me like a mad sign. <laughs> oh, maybe I need to scroll down. I'm glad this made your day. Thank you, Orlanda. Orlanda. Hey, James Robertson, 113, oh, 13, 139. I can't look. Hi, M. La, La, La Reina. Hello, how are you? I'm glad you like this, Nikisha Robbins. So I just want to come and share that with you today. That's it. What's in your wallet? What's in your bank? What's in your story bank? Build a story bank, you'll be surprised. All right, I'll say it. Shaquan. <laughs> how young were you when you first knew what I, what I was? How, so someone just asked me how old I was when I learned what I was going to be doing. Um, by the age of about uh, 15, uh, well, I was watching a lot of TV. I was watching a lot of comedians on TV. I was kind of sure that's what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how to make it happen. Uh, I would say by about 15, I was using humor to win friends and influence people in high school. Some of you have heard me tell the story before. I was a fluffy girl that was so afraid that people would laugh at me. So I said I made them laugh with me. I told jokes. I walked in funny characters. I would hike up my pants in high waters and talk in funny voices. And I made people laugh. And it was really um, a way that I uh, was able to succeed in high school without feeling like I'm going to get teased. It absolutely worked. That's how I was able to win friends and influence people. And it was when I was about 20, 21, I entered into a beauty pageant for plus size girls and they told me there was going to be a talent competition. And so I did a comedy routine and I won first runner up <laughs> and I've been doing comedy ever since. All right, you guys, I will let you go. Your best friends are you Shaquan and Sabuda's. Oh yes, it's Sabuda. That was Latifah's name was Sabuda and I was Shaquan. <laughs> Shaquan and Sabuda. Uh, oh, I'm glad I remind you of your daughter, Zoe. I'm glad of that. Wonderful. All right, everyone, have a wonderful rest of your day, evening, whatsoever. Hey, Lee, how art thou? How art thou? I am talking about your story and how precious all of your stories are. And like I said, if you came in late, there's two questions. My favorite questions are, um, uh, who's your favorite mentor and why? And what were you like as a kid? And the bonus question is, what did you used to get in trouble for as a kid? Says a lot about you. No judgment, but says a lot. Use it. Use it in your business. Use it in your stories. 
I'm happy to come here and share this with you. Hi, Evita. Hello, hello. Hello, Tracy. I feel the love. All right, everybody have a wonderful evening day. What's the never? I always hate to say goodbye. So I'm going to say goodbye, but I'll come back again real soon. I'm going to first say farewell to my Instagram fam. Bye, Instagram fam. End live video. And I didn't. <laughs> End. End. Farewell. And to my Facebook family, thank you all for being here. Thank you for being wonderful. I'll come back some more. Story Bank 101. That's right, Mary. Gracias, Mary. Good night, everybody. Have a wonderful day, evening, whenever you watch this. And if you're in the replay, tell me that you watch the replay and tell me some of the answers to your questions. I'm coming back to watch. Okay, bye. Not watch, read. Okay, bye.